We have looked at the GET request and how we can return JSON using a GET request. But what about POST? POST is very important too, right? So let's go ahead and see that how we can implement a POST request by posting JSON and then our route is going to get the JSON decoded and then we can return some sort of a status. The first thing I will do is since I'm using an API controller, I would say api.post and provide some sort of a route. In this case, I'm just going to provide the route users, which means that you can post to simply call api slash users. And we are going to use a function which will be called create. You can create your own function. You can name your own function. That's perfectly fine too. I'm going to go ahead and create the function, which is going to take once again a request object and it can throw an exception and we should return something. But in this case, I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to return a HTTP status. Now let's go ahead and do it. Let user equals to request dot content. There's a property content on the request object. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to decode the content and we have to supply that what we are decoding the content to. The content is the actual body that we are trying to decode. And we're assuming that the person is sending a JSON or posting JSON, which represents a user object. So we are going to be decoding it into a user object, which we already have because we have created this structure, which represents a user object. So I'm going to go ahead and say over here, user.self. User.self simply means that we are decoding to this particular type. Self is representing the type of the particular uh, user. Okay. Okay. After decoding it, we want to go ahead and maybe print out the user. I mean, there's nothing much we can do. We do have to return something. So I can go ahead and say HTTP status dot OK. So if we get the user printed out on our console, uh, then we will be 100% sure that we were able to get the user and decode it successfully. The request.content.decode is a throwable function. So we have to make sure that we are using the try keyword because it can throw an exception. Let's go ahead and build this. And let's go ahead and run our server. Now our server is running on 127.0 localhost 8080. And we need to post a user because we are decoding user, which is right over here. So let's go ahead and find out how we can actually post JSON that represents a user object. So let's go to our postman. The first thing I'm going to do is change this get to post because we are actually posting. So let's change it to post. Then I can go to headers. I do want content type, but since we are posting JSON, I'm going to change this to application slash JSON. Great. Now we actually have to post the body of the JSON. What exactly are we posting? So I'm going to go to the body and I'm going to select raw option because I want to just type in the JSON that I'm posting. And now in this text box, we can actually write our JSON and make sure that it is in a valid JSON format. So don't start typing it in a object format. So this is more of an object. If it is a valid JSON, you, you will be able to actually put quotes around it. The keys of the JSON are in string format. And you will know that it is a JSON format because if I remove this and now it is invalid format, you will see this cross sign indicating that this is bad string. Okay, so we are passing the name. Let's go ahead and check out some other properties of user. And the other property is age. So let's go ahead and pass in age. Again, the keys are always meant to be in a string format and whatever age you want to pass. Now, if you simply pass in the name and the age and try to send this request, making sure that your server is actually running, which you can always double check, your server is actually running. Then let's see what happens. If I go ahead and send the request, I get back a response and it is saying that the value required for the key address. This means basically this is saying that, well, your user structure contains name 
contains age, but it also contains address, and you haven't really provided us with the address. So let's go ahead and pass in the address. So that's the key that we need to provide also. So I'm going to say address. Now address itself is a JSON object, which contains, I believe, street, and we can provide any street, so whatever, Richmond Avenue or something, and state. So let's go ahead and provide state and which is Texas. Now if I skip over the zip code, because you can see the address does contain a zip code, then again we are going to get the same error because it will say that, hey, address needs to have a zip code. So let's go ahead and send the request. And when you come back, you will see that we are missing the actual zip code for the address. So you need to provide all of those different properties, unless those properties are marked with optionals, which we're going to see later on. So I'm going to go ahead and provide zip code and whatever the zip code is. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and send the request again. You can see that no more the error is actually returned. You can check out the headers. Okay, headers looks fine. The body looks fine. And you can see the status of 200 was actually returned, which is okay. Now, if I go back over here and in the console, you can see that we were printing it on the console, right? Right over here, we were printing it on the console, line number 35, and it is actually printing on the console, which is right here. And you can see that all of those values are actually printed out. Pretty cool, right? And pretty easy to pass in and map your JSON body to a particular structure. Now, what if you are saying that, okay, you know what? I don't really want to pass in address anymore. I only want to pass in a name and age. So that's easy because you can simply go ahead and make the address optional. And now you don't really have to pass it. I mean, if you do pass it, that's fine, but you can completely skip it also. So let's go ahead and run the server again. And I'm going to go back to my postman. And this time I'm going to remove the address key and make sure that I don't have that last comma to make, to make it JSON validated correctly. This is a JSON string. And now I can go ahead and send it. You can see that no error has been thrown. And if I go back and check out what is actually printed out on the actual terminal, you can see that this is a user object which contains the name, which contains the age, but address is nil because we did not pass it because it is optional. So there you have it. It's pretty easy to post JSON in using Vapor 4 because it decodes, allows you to decode the JSON to a existing type that you have already created. So hope you have learned how to post JSON and also to post nested structure of JSON. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses about Swift development, Swift UI, testing iOS app, that is a brand new course that I just released, MVVM design pattern, machine learning, AR Kit, RX Swift, Flutter, Combine, JSON parsing, blockchain programming. I have a many different courses on many different technologies. Now, the best way to get these courses is to check out the YouTube description and please use the links in the description because if you do use the links in the description, then I get to keep a little bit more higher revenue and uh, that will really, really help uh, build the channel. And also, if you like this video, go ahead and share this video with other your friends and also like this video. Liking the video and giving it a thumbs up uh, always help the video to be promoted so other people can uh, watch these videos. Thank you so much for your continuous support and I really hope that you enjoy this video.